Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Anko, Hinata and Hana. Part 1. Huge shout out to Stonehick2099 for this story. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. Prologue. A night to remember in infamy as the village hidden in the leaves was under attack by the monstrous nine-tailed fox. The village's shinobi fought a vicious battle against the gigantic fox, trying their best to keep it back as best they could for their leader, the fourth Hokage Minato Namikaze, to take the necessary steps to defeat the fox beast. Minato don't do it, you will be giving our child a harsh and hellish life being seen different because of him being a jinchuriki, said a woman with long red hair and a casual dress. There is no other choice I must do it I'm sorry. You're in a weakened state sealing the QB and you would very easily kill you, but don't worry he will have his godfather Jiraiya to look after him. Said a confident Minato as he take baby Naruto from her and kisses her on the lips and takes off towards the sealing altar. But not before Kashina who knows better, sends out a signal towards a hidden fortress hidden deep in sector 77 of the forest of death. Time skip 4 hours later. The village hidden in the leaves had been saved thanks to Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage. However not without the sacrifice of his life to the death god. Kashina had fell into a coma that she may never come out of after helping to restrain the Bijuu with her chakra chain and being impaled by the fox Bijuu's claw to her abdomen. Hiruzen and a trusted group of Anbu arrived to the battle site to see Kashina, Minato and a baby. The medics say she is in a coma. Hiruzen looks at the baby boy right next to her seeing him crying. A female medic nin picks up the crying baby and comforts him. Hiruzen goes over to Minato who tells him the boy is his and Kashina's son and that he's the third Jinchuriki of QB, along with telling him his wish to be seen as a hero. Hiruzen knows that would be hard but could be done. Moments before Minato dies, he says Lord Third tell Jiraiya tell him to look out for Naruto my son. Hiruzen then looks over to Kashina and makes a decision that will save her. He created a body double from Kashina's blood and chakra in the place of her body. Effectively faking her death. Hiruzen then makes a clone to take Kashina's unconscious form to someone he can trust out in the village's hospital districts, shadow sections that only he knows about. He tells the group of Anbu medics to keep it a secret from everyone including Jiraiya. Council Chambers. The councils of the civilian, elder and shinobi are discussing the damage during the attack and the number of causalities in the attack. Hiruzen who is called out of retirement to take back the hat of Hokage. Hokage-sama I must ask whose baby is that said one councilman. Ah yes this baby is the new Jinchuriki his name is Naruto Uzumaki, named after Kashina Uzumaki as she is dead, said Hiruzen, the moment however is ruined when they hear a retarded and barbaric councilman. We should kill it and destroy the QB forever, said one council member. No, we should turn him into our weapon and attack dog, said Danzo. I will not kill this baby, nor will I let you Danzo turns this innocent soul into a killing machine, said Hiruzen in an angry tone towards Danzo and the barbaric councilman. The give it to me I my clan will take care of and raise the baby said Tsum. No, no clan will have custody of the child, said Hiruzen as Tsum and many of the clan heads were about to say something until Hiruzen says. Instead, he will have a joint clan guardianship over him. Until he's of 15 years of age to live on his own. My clan agrees to this, said Choza. As does mine said Inoichi. The rest of the clan heads agree to this all except one. That one being the Achiha clan Fugaku Achiha. My clan will not join in the protection of such a beast, said Fugaku, as the clan heads look at him with Tsum growling at him, while holding the infant blonde in her arms close to her. You self-absorbed son Nova Tsum was about to finish saying until Inoichi interrupts her. Leave him be Tsum-chan he'll get a lesson from Makoto, who would more than give him a lesson he will not forget. Said Inoichi as he makes a whipping motion. Fugaku narrows his eyes as they continue. Somewhere in Kanoha. The woman with Onyx eyes suddenly has a sense to want to kill her husband. Back to the council chambers. All right right now we're going into a state of emergency for the village safety, so until that is settled, I'm declaring martial law until we make some repairs and bury our dead. Said Hiruzen getting a nod from everybody. All right meeting adjourned. Baby Naruto is to stay with me until we work out the watch system for the young boy. Said Hiruzen as he takes the young blonde boy from Tsum. As he was doing this Danzo had thoughts about using an experimental force of his route, he was developing for clandestine combat operations, thinking maybe it's the perfect time to test them. Hiruzen then goes to his office with the baby to finish his paperwork needed for village repairs and supplies. He makes it to the office. Setting Naruto inside a cradle letting him sleep. Hiruzen gets to work approving papers for supplies manifests and repair materials. As he finishes the last of the paperwork, he walks over to the crib. Hiruzen about to pick the baby up until an explosion separated him from the sleeping infant. Hiruzen then turns to see a group of 20 attackers wearing all black robes and turban-like masks. 
10 of the attackers proceeds to attack Hiruzen with various methods and weapons. A pair of the 10 attack group appear to be experts of Tejutsu they spearhead the attack. And these two appear to use Zen Ken built on Gokin impressive, but they are not good enough for I myself as a proficient user of the style. Thought Hiruzen as he manages to deflect a roundhouse kick from one of them and kicks one in the head, knocking him away. He then kills the other Tejutsu expert with a decisive counter strike to the back of the expert's neck with a powerful spinning heel kick. As Hiruzen is fighting and slaughtering the attacking group the other ten phantom raiders took baby Naruto and made their way outside of the village with infant in hand. They travel a good distance away from the village heading near training ground 44, otherwise known as the Forest of Death. They travel on the boundaries of the Forest of Death to cover their scent with the dead blood found in the forest from the Inuzuka. They neared the sector of the Forest of Death's infamous Sector 77, a sector full of dangerous wildlife and rumored ghost warriors. Baby Naruto is crying uncontrollably as he senses the intent of the strangers that are carrying him. As the robed raiders run on the boundaries, they had reached the sector. Before they make any more lead way to their destination, one of the raiders leading the way had been struck by an arrow coming out of nowhere. The group get into defensive positions unsure where the attacker is. One by one each raider is killed in a myriad of ways. Dwindling down to four members. What do we do now said a phantom nin as he's back to back with his teammates. Before any of them could react, the man holding Naruto is killed via a neck break from an assailant above them, who also took the baby from them. Another raider is pulled under the ground and killed, a disc-like weapon hits a raider dead square in his head, splitting it open, killing him instantly. The final raider is the killed by what seemed to be a trident-like weapon. The mysterious warriors look over towards the baby in all his innocence. The baby looks at them in wonder and reaches out towards the one that appears to be the leader. Ah so cute said one of the warriors. Yes, he is Kura said another mystery warrior. The now revealed Kura is cuddling the young infant, stroking his whisker marks getting him to purr. Which made the fierce female warrior make a kawaii cry. Alright people let's move back to the fortress with Kashina's son Gosen Sama, would like to see the baby as well, seeing as it's his grandnephew. We don't want to keep the warlord of thunder waiting, said the leader. All of them then shun Shin towards the hidden fortress. Back at the Hokage Tower. Hiruzen is panting hard as he had just killed enemy assassins that truly made him sweat as they were near masters of the methods of fighting. Anbu said a semi-tired Hiruzen. Hokage-sama what happened here asked Hayabusa in a worried tone. I don't know, but someone had slipped in through the night when the wall was damaged. Have all sealing and engineer teams to the wall to patch any holes made I also want Inoichi to look through the heads of these dead raiders to see where they took the baby to and why they took him. Said Hiruzen in a slightly tired but commanding voice. Ashina I'm sorry I hope you can forgive me said Hiruzen. Unknowing to Hiruzen there are forces that even here his rival Danzo doesn't know about that are in the Sector 77. And the hidden fortress in Sector 77 of the Forest of Death. So this is the bundle of joy Kishina brought into this world, said a mountain of a man in black samurai-like armor as white hair and a build of a fierce warrior king. Kura cradling the giggling Naruto, looks over at the Herculean of a man in marvel. He then reaches out for him with tiny arms to be picked up by the imposing figure. Give him to me Kura let me see my grandnephew, said the man. Of course, Raisin Sama said Kura as she hands the baby to the now named Raisin. Dosen holds the baby blonde spinning with him in his arms, baby Naruto is giggling at this and gets a kawaii moment from some of the warrior women in the room. When Gosen had also stroked his whisker marks causing him to purr. As Gosen was holding Naruto, he notices something on the baby's back. That being a birthmark of a tiger and dragon. He has the mark of the two great beasts he's the chosen one my ancestors have foretold in the legends. Thought the Thunder Lord as he looks at the young baby boy in awe of this discovery. This is going to be some of the most interesting years. As soon as Kashina gets out of her coma she will meet her son a son who will do incredible things, thought the Warlord of Thunder, as he walks toward the nursery that was set up for the young blonde. Elsewhere in the Elemental Nations in Lightning County. A dig site can be seen in the Alpine Mountains. The excavators are working diligently and tirelessly. They soon discover the remains of a reptilian creature of a sort that is persevered in crystal. One of the leaders of the excavation sent a notification to a nearby village. That nearby village had the symbol of clouds over its gate. End of prologue. Hinoha at night. The Hyuga compound had celebrated the birthday of the heiress Hinata Hyuga, who was at the moment who at the moment was playing with her pregnant mother. Hinata is really hoping that she gets a sister to play with. All right Hinata dear time for bed. I'll see you in the morning for your reading, said Hitomi as she sets young Hinata to bed and kisses her head. Good night mom see you in the mom, said Hinata as she starts to fall asleep. Everything was going well for the young Hyuga, but she is about to enter through hell and be changed for the better. Outside of the Hyuga compound is a figure clad in black, getting ready for a surprise theft of the Hyuga for not only their knowledge, but also their bloodline, with one target being the Hyuga heiress herself. 
The man slips inside with the steady pace of a panther. He creeps inside of the room of the heiress to clan and places her in a game jutsu sleep that would last for hours. He picks her up and places her in a sack and runs out of the Hyuga compound with the speed of a thief in the night. This is the beginning of a hellish experience. Time skip four years. Kanoha was in an uproar. Kumo had stolen the Hyuga heiress and several secrets to their clan who denies the allegation. The Hyuga clan is hurting more specifically the clan head and his wife are at the loss of their firstborn. In Kumo. Anada for the last four months was being conditioned to be a soldier of Kumo. However, her will is too strong for the conditioning to take hold. Her taskmasters were getting frustrated at this Hyuga's willpower to refuse Kumo. Though she was trained in combat, etiquettes and her clan's gentle fist while being beaten for her insolence towards the Raikage. Anada at the moment was praying one day for someone to save her. What she doesn't know is her prayer is going to be answered. In the future. However, there is one last hell she has to go through. In the Raikage's office. The Raikage is a man of a build that only few can match, well in his fifties, he's among the oldest of the Kages in the elemental nations. Right now, he is rereading the reports from the excavation about five years ago about what they discovered. So, the legends are true the remains of a dragon god is in the mountains of lightning country. How fortuitous of this discovery maybe we can improve R&D's genetic research projects with this new discovery. Thought the Raikage as he then looks onto the reports of Project Ally. Seeing it a failure to convert the young heiress Hugo to their side. He thinks to use her as a subject to one of the genetic programs to his experiments. Time skip 17 years later. A beautiful woman with long red hair is seen in a room akin to one from a hospital in a medical bikini, asleep in a tank filled with ice-cold water to keep her healing. This woman is Kashina Yuzumaki last matriarch of the main branch of the Yuzumaki clan. She had been in a long coma for the last several years in a special hospital top secret to even the elder councils, and only used by Hokages and their families to watch out for political enemies and enemies of the village called the Temple of Fire. Doctors for the past couple of hours over the years had been seeing to her. In a very extensive and efficient manner keeping her shape and figure through daily passive exercises and tube feedings to give her body effective nourishment. Unknowingly the doctors are unaware that Kishina is starting to awake from her years-long slumber. One doctor walk into her room and sees everything is fine, seeing no changes in her condition, that is until Kishina starts to spur awake from her coma. The doctor looks at Kishina noticing she's starting to wake up goes to his communicator and speaks into it. Get me the third Hokage. Kishina Yuzumaki Namikaze is waking up. Said the doctor as he talks into the intercom. In Sector 77 of the Forest of Death. A young man of 6 to 17 years of age with blonde hair sporting a physique and build that comparable to some of the great samurai and ninja, on his face he had thick whisker marks his eye color is a sapphire blue. He is wearing a white sleeveless guy showing a dragon and tiger symbol on the back of it, sporting four arm bracers on his arms, finally he's wearing black pants and hand style boots, with shin guard plates that have the dragon and tiger engraved in them. This young man is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze he is currently living in the forest of death in the forest's cavern area, after he was told of a prophecy by his grand uncle seven years ago. Flashback seven years ago. Naruto had grown up from the cute baby into a wild card of a young boy, always pulling pranks and getting into mischievous adventures which brightened up the dark sector. Naruto had been educated in history, science, mathematics, philosophy, spirituality, and many other fields of study. The teachers had high praises for the young blonde. Raisin and Kira even given him the talk. Raisin also taught Naruto what a Jinchuriki is and that he is one which made Naruto appreciative. His grand uncle Raisin the Warlord of Thunder and his trusted friends the other Warlords of Storms had trained Naruto in different fields of combat, strategy, and weapons. Shiva taught Naruto marksmanship and all ranged weapons. Appa taught Naruto all-round athletics, combat acrobatics and parker. Boro taught Naruto stealth tactics and techniques, along with game jutsu. Yuliusen taught Naruto Senjutsu and Tejutsu. Raisin himself taught Naruto Ninjutsu, Fuinjutsu and Samurai-style martial arts. Raisin and Yuliusen in particular taught him battle methods that made them masters of melee combat. Naruto had excelled. Progressing greatly in his training. At the moment he's at the age of nine. In a private office. Alright Naruto-kun your training is near complete, but there is one piece to your training that will make you complete said Raisin as he walks towards a chest in the center of the room. Raisin takes out a bow with a quiver of arrows and a survival knife, and a few supply scrolls for medical and spice. You will live in the forest for seven years without our assistance and your ninja gear. These weapons will be what you use to defend yourself and hunt during your stay in the forest, explained Raisin. Grand uncle why am I being sent into the forest? Am I being punished or thrown out, said a confused and worried Naruto. No Naruto you're not being thrown out or being punished. 
You're on a rendezvous with Destiny Naruto said Raisin getting a confused look from Naruto. What do you mean Grand Uncle Raisin, said a confused Naruto. Naruto do you know what's on your back asked Raisin. Yes, the symbol of the dragon and tiger answered Naruto. Correct but what you didn't know is the symbol is connected to a prophecy foretelling of one who would have the power of the white tiger and green dragon and do battle with many great evils and forge their own path in life. That person is you Naruto you have a destiny like no other and make no mistake Naruto-kun you will have a journey like no other, said Raisin as Naruto has a look of awe in his eyes. He was destined to have the power of the great guardians of the east and the west. Time skipped three years. For three long years Naruto had been surviving in the forest of death by himself with grit and determination. So far, he is doing better than before. He has managed to kill a deer and a giant Hercules-type tarantula and is on his way to his cave to eat and make some new tools with the tarantula's silk and the deer's bones. As he is walking a streak of tigers come across him the two sides get into a standoff. Before anything can happen, a tiger cub cries out in pain. Naruto notices this and walks over to the tiger some of the tigers get into defensive positions around the cub. Wow easy now let me heal your young and I will be on my way. Said Naruto as he goes near the cub. The tiger sensing no negative intentions towards the cub backs away. Naruto begins to treat the cub pulling out the kunai in the cub's leg, putting some herbs on the wound. He then wraps the wound with some of the silk from the tarantula. The cub then licks Naruto on the cheek in a way of thanks. Before Naruto could do anything, he hears a roar from one of the tigers. The tiger appeared to be a white tigress and possible leader of the streak of tigers. As the tigers around him bow before her in respect. Who are you human said the tigress getting a surprising look from Naruto. Did you just talk asked a surprised Naruto. Yes, human I did. Now who are you human commanded the tigress in an authoritative tone. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze said Naruto as he revealed his full name. And so the bloodline of the Namikaze still breathes and with Uzumaki blood no less. Thank you for healing our cub. Said the white tigress as Naruto bows in praise from her. How do you know of the Namikaze and Uzumaki clan asked a curious Naruto. Before Naruto and the tigress could say anything a large pack of wolves spring into action and attacks. Naruto and the tigers begin fighting them off left and right. Naruto striking down wolves one after another with his bow and arrow. The tigress and the tigers fight off the wolves as best they could to keep them away from the cub. Naruto had ran out of arrows in his quiver, so he had tossed his bow to the side and took out his survival knife and began killing wolves that came his way. One wolf manages to blindside him by delivering a powerful claw strike towards his chest, cutting him deeply. Naruto grunted in pain and continues to fight even fiercer than ever before. The wolves surround him and begin to overwhelm him. Unknown to Naruto his birthmark specifically his tiger symbol begins to glow and become color a white and black color, exactly like the white tiger of the west. Naruto feels changes to his body feeling a boost of strength like never before. Before the group of wolves could kill him, Naruto knocks the wolves away in a display of newfound brute strength. He starts to glow in a beam of light. Inside the beam of light his body starts to change getting very muscular for his age. His skin grows out hair throughout his body, his face takes on a feline-like feral appearance. Naruto's eyes become a jade green with slits. His canines become thick and sharp. Naruto becomes the white tiger beast man. The light disappears to reveal the beast-like boy in all his glory. The wolves are chased off when Naruto goes on the attack. The tigers and the white tigress are in awe of the young boy's transformation. Naruto kills the wolves stupid enough to stay and fight. As he does so the tigress has thoughts of the legends her elders have foretold of one who would have the mark of the two legendary beasts. With the beasts being of a white tiger and a legendary green dragon. Looks like she found the one she is supposed to teach in her ways. As Naruto kills the last offending wolf, he takes a deep breath. As he looks at himself in a pool of blood, he has gained the power of the white tiger. He turns to see the tigers around him looking at him in awe. Where were we? Said the feral young boy. I know your ancestral clans because we are the clan's guards for their secrets. I myself is the teacher that's supposed to find the one with the two legendary beasts mark. It just so happens to be you. Said the white tigress as Naruto is surprised at this reveal of a tiger training him. When do we begin? Asked Naruto in a serious tone. Time skip four years later. The white tigress had trained Naruto relentlessly. Teaching him the ways of the white tiger in all their glory. The white tigress revealed her name to be Talia. She had deeply trained his white tiger state to where he can go from human to beast man at will. Talia had helped Naruto develop a set of animalistic combat techniques and maneuvers to use when in his beast man state. Talia had effectively made Naruto into a natural warrior in combat. His physical build and physique can be described as a powerful all-around athlete in fields of weightlifting, gymnastics, track and field, horse riding and cross-country running. Naruto had also spent some time with the streak hunting and living with them. 
After his training under Talia was done, he said his goodbyes to the tigers and left the streak. He went back to his granduncle in the hidden fortress where he told of his adventure and his newfound powers and abilities. Raise in surprise that his grandnephew unlocked his tiger side starts to be thrilled at his growth in his studies as a ninja and a warrior. Raisin then takes out a set of battle garb and gear made for him by his uncle and fellow teachers. With the symbol of two beasts in mind. End of flashback. Naruto is practicing his skills in the makeshift training ground he made in the large cavern. He first practices his shuriken jutsu throwing small stones at the target dummy and practicing with a specialty weapon said his grandfather had forged for him called a chakram, a combat halo-like ring that doubles as a brass knuckle weapon and a throwing weapon. He then practices his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills on a special training dummy, homing in on his technique, speed, and strength. Finally, he practices his knife-fighting skills with several reinforced shadow clones, sparing against them in a large melee 1v25, all in the Tiger Beast Man state. After his workout he hears laughter and grunts of pain. He goes to investigate to see something that boils his guts with rage. There in a field in the forest. Are ten men and one woman, that purple-haired woman naked with cuts and bruises on her body and legs, is Anko Midarashi Snake Princess of Konoha. She was doing a standard combat exercise with a group of twenty Anbu recruits. These ten Anbu seemed to have given the other ten a false order from the Hokage. Who that felt good to beat this whore. So, boys who's up for running a train on this snake whore. Said one of the Anbu as he gets out a large pack of condoms and lubricant. Yeah, Taki now you're speaking my language said an Anbu as he grabs one of the condoms. Okay kite, jaguar hold her down and spread her legs, said Taki as four Anbu restrain the purplinette and have her legs spread wide open for the group to see. This gets the men aroused as they began to unzip their pants and ready themselves for unadulterated fun in their eyes as they see her folds and tight hole. That ready snake bitch when we're done you're gonna be wanting more. If any of us are still hard maybe, you can satisfy us with that dirty mouth of yours or that nice hole of yours. Said one of the Anbu in Anko's ear as he licks it. I can't believe I'm going to have my virginity taken by a bunch of bastards. God if you're listening please help me thought Anko as she braces herself for her imminent violation. Before any of them could force themselves on the woman licking their lips in anticipation for the best time with the snake princess. Until an arrow hit one of them killing him instantly getting everyone's attention. Filthy pieces of shit how dare you try to do this to a woman, shouted an enraged Naruto in his tiger man beast state as he leaps down from his vantage point. He begins to attack them in various brutal fashions with his dual combat knives, in conjunction with his brutal and animalistic hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Naruto thinks to himself. And these guys are Anbu of the Leaf the Hokage's elite fighters. However, these guys shouldn't be in the unit with their sloppy technique and footwork, they fight like untrained brawlers than skilled ninja, heck one of them tried using a fire jutsu on a moving target and he still missed and hit an ally. They may have been put in by false recommendation by those bastard civilians. Should probably make a mental note. To ask the Hokage to have more background checks on Shinobi Naruto takes down the last renegade Anbu member, with an axe handle smash breaking his neck, killing him instantly. Amazing he torn them apart like they were nothing thought Anko, who had sat up on a tree trying her best to cover herself as she witnessed the brutality of the primal warrior in front of her. Naruto then goes towards the purplinette. Stay back, said a frightened Anko as she backs away from her primal savior. It's alright ma'am. I'm not going to hurt you said Naruto as he changes back to his normal form. Then he takes a scroll containing a blanket from a pouch on his leg and covers Anko with it. Anko on her part had calmed down a little as she didn't have a fear of being raped by the young man in front of her. She felt comfortable and warm around him. Suddenly she passes out after the adrenaline high from the pain of the beating she received and her near rape dies down. Um, it seems the adrenaline high she was on had worn off. Better get her some treatment and some clothes. Thought Naruto as he picks Anko up bridal style and leaps away from the area towards his cavern. Back in Konoha. Hiruzen and Tsunade is rushing to the shadow sections of the Temple of Fire to see Kashina. He and Tsunade walks into her room to see that she's waking up slowly in a bed. Her vision fuzzy but slowly she regains her vision. Ah here is an, Tsunade where am I and where's Naruto? Asked a slightly weakened Kashina. I'm sorry Kashina, but Naruto was kidnapped by mysterious warriors. The kidnappers had traveled on the barrier of Sector 77 to throw the trackers off. However, we found that the kidnappers had been killed, but the baby wasn't among the dead. Said Hiruzen as Kashina looked at him with a mixture of shock at the kidnapping of her baby and joy that they had stupidly walked into her uncle's domain. Don't worry Hiruzen Naruto isn't in any trouble the people who have him are Yuzumakis of the Tenno branch. Said Kashina as Hiruzen looks at her in shock of the revelation. Tsunade had stoic look at her former student but internally she is happy that her godson is still alive in among the living and among family. You mean to tell me the Tenno branch still lives where have they been all this time? 
asked a curious Hirazan. They have been in hiding from the rest of the world. They would have jumped in during the QB's attack, but I had told them that Naruto may need a home in case I had died, and the council would try to kill him or take away his protections by overruling you and the clan heads. By going to the daimyo said Kashina. By the way how long was I out asked Kashina. You've been out for 17 years. Said Hirazan getting a shocking look from Kashina. Kashina, thinking she has been out of her son's life for so long resolved to find her son. Come Hirazan we need to find Naruto, but first I have some stops to make said Kashina as Hirazan nods in agreement. Wait Kashina, I need to do a scan on you to see if the treatment had worked without a hitch, said Tsunade, as she runs a chakra scan on her wildcard student. Back to Naruto. Naruto had taken Anko into his cavern home to give her treatment and clothing. At the moment she is running a fever. Um, she is burning up with a fever those bastards really did a number on her. Well should probably go gather some firewood and some food for tonight thought Naruto as he leaves Anko to gather some firewood. Leaving a shadow clone behind to watch her. Naruto went to go get some firewood and some food for the night ahead. Naruto also went into the forest to hunt for some wild berries to go with the salmon and trout he had caught in the river. As he was going through the forest, he sees a glint of a weapon in the distance of the forest and goes to investigate the area. As Naruto stealthily moved closer, he sees a group of Anbu with the symbol of Root on their masks. Um, so Danzo Shimura still has his Root unit operational albeit secretly and by the seams of their movement, they are moving to something hidden. Well might as well get a closer look thought Naruto as he makes a smokeless shadow clone and commanded him to take the wild berries and fish he collected back to the cavern. He suppresses his chakra well enough to slip past the radar of the highly trained sensors of the group. He stealthily trails them going unnoticed by the group sensor ninjas. As he follows the drone-like ninja group, he wonders what they could be doing in the forest, but he was getting to the bottom of it. Elsewhere in the forest of death. Three women are at the area where one Anko Midarashi went missing with ten Anbu. Or rather where the ten Anbu was just slaughtered. This is a bloodbath look at the claw marks on this one. Said a semi feral looking woman in a flak jacket and cargo shorts surrounded by three huskies. Some of them have knife wounds, whoever did this was brutal but a pro at the same time. Said a woman in Anbu armor with a cat mask. Well, that's one group of rapists that aren't going to make it into Anbu. Said a ruby-eyed woman with wild black hair and a battle dress with a flak jacket as she found on one of the Anbu a set that a rapist and murderer would have. Did you pick up any sense Hana asked Nico. Yes, however it's weird me and the Himaru triplets are picking up two scents that are identical and yet different at the same time said Hana as she gets a shocking look from the two women. What are the scents asked Nico. Well, it's both that of a man and a tiger said Hana as she gets a look of confusion from her. Are you sure asked the swordswoman. Positively said Hana. I hope you're alright Anko thought Hana and her two other friends, they look round the battle site for any clues or indications. Until one of the huskies found something and barked. The Himaru triplet found something look, said the raven-haired beauty. What did they find Kurinai asked Nico as she walks over to her friend. Hair but not just any hair white tiger answered the now revealed Kurinai. Let's hope we can find Anko and whatever did this said Hana as she and her husky triplet partners sniff the hair for any sense. Back in Kanoha. Kashina the third Hokage and a returned Tsunade had been going over what's been happening. Kashina was pissed. As Hirazan told her the civilian counselors had petitioned that the Yuzumaki and Namikaze assets be seized and put in the village coffers, or more like their coffers. Hirazan has been fighting tooth and nail over those assets. However, one day he says that Jureya his bravest student had agreed that they should seize those assets and that they would be given to strengthen the village and that no moral respect for two dead clans properties should get in the way of that. She was also told that Hitomi Hyuka her best friend had died giving birth to her second daughter. Leaving Kashina sadden until Tsunade had told her that the news she told her was a cover story Hitomi was in fact murdered. Tsunade explained that someone was giving Hitomi some form of slow-acting poison that was damaging her heart. Which shocks Kashina to her core. Hirazan lastly told her that Kumo had kidnapped Hiashi's older daughter Hinata to be in their special breeding program codename. Shiva. His informant says she has days before she is to be bred on her 17th birthday in the next two months. With this information about what has happened in her village she is really pissed beyond belief. Somewhat good news came from Tsunade. As she tells her that her other best friend Makoto Uchiha had divorced the asshole of a husband Fugaku Uchiha. Who then plotted a coup to overthrow the Hokage, resulting in the ringleaders of the attempted coup being killed by Itachi Uchiha, who is now an undercover nin in the Akatsuki. When I get my hands on that piece of shit Uchiha Madara, I'm gonna break every bone in his body and shove my sword up his ass and make him shit blood. Thought Kashina as she balls her fists tightly to draw blood. Somewhere in rain country. The man in an orange spiraling mask shivers in fear. 
I sense death and misery on the horizon thought Toby, he shakes himself with the shiver. Back to Kanoha. Kashina at the moment is getting back into optimum fighting condition by fighting off groups of training dummies with her practice swords and bare hands. Will her shadow clones go through the temple's library on new methods of chakra control? Boy, I pray to any god for mercy on whoever pissed Kashina off. Thought the old Kage as he and Tsunade looks at Kashina tearing through training dummies left and right. Back with Naruto. Naruto had trailed the group of Root Anbu back to an excavation site. The site revealed to be a large temple of sword hidden in the forest of death. As Naruto is moving around, he hears a shout from a Root Anbu, who is leading a charge against a group of guards inside of the temple. We have an intruder kill him and get the relic for Lord Danzo Root Anbu, as he along with other operatives, rush inside of the temple to take care of the mysterious intruder other than Naruto. Naruto while in hiding is thinking who is this intruder better yet what are these root grunts looking for in this temple. Naruto goes to the command station to the see a type of tapestry showing a warrior with a very symbol Naruto has on his back and showing a uniquely designed bow in the temple. Might as well go get this bow before the old warhick sends more grunts to needless deaths to collect the bow in this dig site. First, I may need to take care of any extra root anbu that may see me before the village does and cut off any calls for reinforcements. Thought Naruto as he moves out of the command tent and goes to the comms tent and sabotaged it, making it send an all-clear message out and booby-trapped it just in case anyone had any ideas on changing it. Naruto also made headway on the guards, silently eliminating any rude Anbu at the dig site before going into the temple. As he moves through the temple, he sees glyphs and other tapestries on the wall that appears to be a map showing two other items in temples, similar to the one he's in. Showing a set of armor in a temple that is seen in what looks to be Land of Bears near Star Village, and a pair of swords in Land of Vegetables. Naruto memorized the locations and goes to see how the battle is going with the intruder and the root Anbu. He hears the intense fighting going on as he turns the corner and sees a figure in samurai-like armor designed like a falcon fighting root Anbu. Impressive his fighting technique is akin to a choreographed dance he's no dojo fighter he's fighting like a professional samurai, I've been educated about never wasting a single ounce of energy in his moves. Thought Naruto as he sees the mysterious warrior deal with the last group of root Anbu. Naruto walks out towards the man not close but pole length. Greetings Naruto Uzumaki or do you prefer Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, said the mysterious warrior. Who are you and how do you know my name asked a curious Naruto. I'm Shinken Falcon Guardian of the Ultra Falcon Warbo, said the now named Shinken. As for how I know your name it's simple your name was given to the guardians of each generation, from the era of the Sage of the Six Paths, by a friend of the sage named Vishnu, a philosopher and holy man of the period, who saw a vision of a warrior with the power of the White Tiger, wisdom of the Green Sky Dragon, and the willpower of the Falcon. He said the warrior who would be from the descendants of Ashura and a samurai dynasty of your Sengoku period. Explained Shinken. So let me guess this Vishnu created this ultra war bow and other pieces for me to use. Asked an understanding Naruto getting a nod from the Falcon Samurai. Yes, however you need to be able to prove yourself worthy of this bow through trial by combat, answered Shinken as he gets into a fighting stance with Naruto doing the same. Naruto and Shinken began a ferocious battle. Naruto fighting using the cycling thunder fist in conjunction with his knives and tiger state. Shinken's own combat skills are being brought to full bear of the fight. With his acrobatics being used more in the fight. The next 4 hours and 30 minutes had been a fierce battle of wills, with neither warrior giving up Naruto and Shinken are both going back and forth. Trading unarmed strikes, bladed strikes and elemental jutsus. The two break away from the close quarters fighting. Shinken throws out shuriken which is responded by chakrams being thrown by Naruto. The two re-engage in close combat. The two then get into a blade lock. Naruto uses a headbutt, staggering the warrior enough for Naruto to execute a low spinning heel kick, knocking the warrior to the ground who is then placed at knife point with the blonde holding the knife. This fight is over said the blonde as he has the falcon warrior in a position for no arguments. Well done you have proven yourself worthy of the bow said Shinken as he transforms into the stone falcon seal. Naruto then picks up a seal and goes towards an unopened chamber where he sees the ultra falcon warbo. He looks for the lock for it and discovers it. Placing the falcon stone seal on the lock opening the chamber. There lying in the center is a bow of marvelous craftsmanship. Naruto walks forward and picks up the war bow and marvels at its design. Suddenly a beam of light from the weapon shoots into Naruto's mind not killing him, but rather giving him something of extraordinary proportions that he will instinctively know what it is. Naruto then proceeds to move out of the temple complex, but not before taking the treasures found inside. Back in the cavern base camp. Banko is resting peacefully as Naruto's clone had made some fresh medicine for her to take so she can get over the fever. Good thing the boss got instruction on an herbal remedy. Thank goodness the ingredient for the remedy is easily found. Thought the shadow clone. 
Soon Naruto returned with the Ultra Falcon bow in hand as he sees the beautiful Purplinette resting and sleeping peacefully. Such beauty and one full of suffering I hope you wake up soon so we may talk, whispered Naruto to himself as he goes and sets the Ultra Falcon bow on the stand so he can go make dinner for himself and his guest. Banko Midarashi is sleeping peacefully in a bed made out for her with animal furs as a blanket. As a sleeping beauty in her own right. Slowly she wakes up to the smell of food she gets up to see she is not in her bed, not even in her home she looks around to see she's in a cavern. As she slowly gets up, she feels the pain from the attack from her attempted rapists. Banko moans in pain as she was doing this, she failed to notice a figure right next to her. Breeding snake woman said Naruto as he surprises the woman in front of her. Who are you and why am I here asked Anko in a false state of bravery. No need to be scared of me ma'am I was the one who saved you from those renegade Anbu. The names Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze you may know my father Minato Namikaze. Revealed Naruto as he is holding a plate of cooked trout and salmon with wild berries he picked. May I have your name? Asked Naruto. Anko Midarashi answered the still stunned Purplanette. This is for you said Naruto as Anko picks her metaphoric jaw of the ground to hear that the man in front of her is the son of the fourth Hokage Kanoha's greatest champion and savior. That's impossible he didn't have a child, said a still shocked and disbelieving Anko as she takes the plate of food he had out for her. Actually, he did, do you remember the baby the third discovered near the fourth Hokage? Asked Naruto as he looks at an Anko who's eating as she starts to get a realization. You're the baby that was abducted by those mysterious attackers that was killed near Sector 77. Answered Anko as she gets a nod from the blonde. How were you able to turn into that thing asked Anko. Oh, you mean this said Naruto as he turns into his tiger beast man mode, shocking Anko as she looks at the blonde turn into a human tiger hybrid. Well, it's a long story and you might not want to dot Naruto never got to finish as Anko gave him an inquisitive look that said better tell me now or later. Naruto began to tell Anko all he could talk about himself and how he was rescued. Hours had passed and Anko fell asleep peacefully. Naruto proceeds to leave her room peacefully. Naruto then walks towards the training ground to practice his daily Tai Kai exercises for the next several hours. Hours outside of Naruto's cavern home. Hana Inuzuka and her battle partners the Himaru triplets, the Anbu Niko and Kurana Yuhi, all track the scent they found at the site of the Anbu recruit massacre. Thirteen hours until the daytime of the next day they found that it leads to a cave. All right girls I'll send a clone to report our findings to the Hokage said Niko as she sends out a clone towards the Hokage tower. As the group sit and rest for a little bit. That is until they hear sounds of a battle cry in the cave. The three go to investigate the noise in the cave they discover a castle fortress of superb engineering and design at the cave's cavern. They move to find the source of the sounds they see in the castle's training ground, a man with golden blonde hair and blue eyes in a white and black battle garb practicing martial arts. They get into a good position to see the stranger in practice. For the next several hours the man had practiced with various weapons ranging from swords, staves, spears, halberds of various types, and various battle axes. Taking off his shirt revealing musculature any man would be envious of getting a blush from two of his watchers as he begins his tojutsu drills practicing various katas from the styles he learned that made one Inuzuka on the verge of jumping the blonde man and riding him all night before taking him into custody. The man finishes with a 540 tornado kick and lands in a splits position. He gets up off the ground and goes over to the towel rack to get one of the towels and wipe sweat off of himself. You four can come out please I know you're there said calmly the blonde man as he is surrounded by the three kanoichis who have kunai and sword pointed at his throat and surrounded by three huskies. Make one move and you're dead said Niko as she held her sword firmly towards his throat. Where is Anko Midarashi asked Kurinai as she is keeping her cool around the seemingly calm and sophisticated wildman. I'm here you can drop your weapons ladies he's friendly. He's the one that defended my virginity and my ass from those horny bastards, said Anko as she walks out towards them in some spare clothes, as her friends are looking at him with a cautious look. You smell of a tiger. Where is your tiger asked Hana as she smells the blonde in front of her. You're looking at him said Naruto as he transforms into his tiger beast man state, shocking the three kanoichis in front of them along with the huskies who look at the human in a feral and animalistic state of being. Who and what are you ask as startled Niko as she has her sword towards the tiger man in front of her. I am Naruto Yum his will is strong and he shows no fear of us. This one has samurai and ninja training whoever trained him is good. Heck that's an understatement he's superb. Thought Niko as she looks at the tiger man beast. Um he's an alpha alright a strong one. Whoever you are Naruto you are a keeper for any woman thought Hana as she is looking the warrior up and down. Alright you might want to come with us for some questioning. Ask Niko. Sorry not yet I must go see my grand uncle on an important matter, said Naruto as he walks away from them. Bolded you're coming with us to see the Hokage and answer some questions. 
demanded an irate Kurinai. Sorry ma'am I need to investigate an important matter said Naruto as he goes towards his home until he is blocked by Nico and a Himeru triplet. Listen Nico I have no problem with you and your friends, but I'm losing my patience with this. Said Naruto as he is starting to get annoyed. How about this? You're skilled with the sword aren't you Naruto asked Nico as she looks at Naruto who nods his head. What of it he asks as he looks towards the Nico mask Anbu in front of him. How about a first blood match? Whoever draws first blood wins. I win you come back with us. Answered Nico. If I win, I'll come back on my term said Naruto as he walks over to a weapons rack to get an Anjato. No one interferes said Nico as she gets into her sword stance with Naruto getting out of his beast mode and getting into his stance. In an hour and fifty minutes both swords master and mistress engage in a duel of refinement and ability. Naruto and Nico parries each other strikes. Nico is taken off guard by Naruto's agility and reflexes. Easily matching her own not only that he's not using any chakra at all, just using all natural agility and reflexes from years of being in the forest of death. Nico is greatly impressed with his ability to combat her as an equal. Remarkable he's not only effectively defending against Nico, but he's adapting to every angle and every pattern of attack Nico is making. Incredible it's like he's fraught sword experts of her caliber. Thought Anko, Hana and Kurinai as they look at the sword fighters battle. Nico and Naruto are seemingly on par with each other. However, Nico never expected Naruto to rep up at his higher levels of speed, greatly surprising her, Naruto then pierces Nico's guard and getting first blood by nipping her in the arm. Alright looks like I won so please stand aside I need to go and investigate strange artifacts pertaining to this said Naruto as he takes his shirt off. Showing his unique birthmark to the three Kinoichis. Unexpectedly Hana went over to him and studied the birthmark. You're the one aren't you asked Hana as Nico and Kurinai look at their feral friend suspiciously. Yes, answered Naruto as he looks at the feral woman in front of him. What are you two talking about? Asked a curious Kurinai. The bruiser of a man in front of us. Bears a mark foretold in my clan's legends. This mark is the legendary beasts of Shintaoism. The legend tells of one who has the mark will possess superhuman attributes that would make some pale in comparison. Said Hana as she gets a look from Nico, Anko and Kurinai look on in surprise. It's true I have superhuman attributes and if you haven't noticed I haven't used any chakra in our match said Naruto, as he gets a shocking look from everyone there. The huskies the move towards the blonde and began licking and sniffing his hands as he puts them on their heads as a show of friendliness to them. He goes to his study to find the Ultra Falcon Warbo. He comes out to see the four Kanoichis looking at him with intrigue as Nico then bows to him out of respect. Naruto bows back in respect. You are a superb swordsman please ask me this. Who trained you in the art of the blade? Asked Nico as she looks at the stranger. My masters were the five warlords of storms answered Naruto as he gets a look of awe from Nico. Now let's go I need to go see my granduncle, said Naruto. No way said Nico as she and her friends leave the cavern fortress with a blonde nature boy right behind them. Naruto does a short series of hand signs sealing art. Seal of sentinels called out Naruto as beings of ethereal energy are seen walking around the cavern fortress. As they leave Nico is in thought of who trained the forest fighter who bested her in a first blood contest. I'm off we shall meet again in the future. Good luck oh and Nico san please take this scroll to the third Hokage said Naruto as he hands a scroll to Nico. He's about to leap away until Anko cries out wait. What is it said Naruto as Anko in a burst of speed jumps on him and kisses him deeply. Naruto returned the kiss with equal vigor. Anko broke awake from the warrior in front of her. That's for saving my virginity said Anko in a slightly sultry tone as she leaps away with her friends. Hana blows a kiss at the blonde. He's going to be fun right, Anko said Hana as she gets a blush from the snake mistress. Boy, I hope I can find more interesting people in Kanoha like them. Thought Naruto as he makes his way towards his grand uncle. Back in Kanoha with Kishina. Kishina had been resting after waking up and exercising. She had tired herself out training. Tsunade had ran a diagnostic of her old student to see that she is resting peacefully. Kishina in her dreams was dreaming about her husband and son having good times together as a family. She was having a dream any person can relate to when feeling alone without their lover or child. In her heart she feels an ache of tremendous proportion. If she only knew that she would meet her son in the next coming days. Back to Naruto. Naruto had told his granduncle and his friends about the Ultra Falcon Warbo. How there are weapons like it. Let me see if my forefathers had anything on record about these weapons said Raisin as he goes to one of the shelves of his library. Naruto talked to his other masters of his adventures, even showing his Tiger Man Beast state. 
the woman with black violet hair wearing turban-like headwear with tan skin and a highly endowed and athletic build that is a cross between a highly trained gymnast and a model, wearing dark purple battle wear akin to that of a hitakiri and an archer, has a kawaii moment when she strokes Naruto's whiskers, making him purr. She is Shiva mistress of long-range combat. Or Lord of Rainstorm's Amazon warrior from the western continent from the Kingdom of the Wills. The highly built short man with white hair, pale skin, red eyes in eastern style light plated and turban robed armor walks over to Beepies the blonde's physique and features. Greatly surprising him with the type of savagery his student is capable of now. The man is Gora master of illusionary arts and lethal stealth techniques warlord of windstorms. The philosopher and inventor from the nomadic tribe from the Golden Gate in the desert of wind country. A man with a build not too dissimilar to Naruto in his normal form with black hair, silver eyes and pale skin. He has on clothing that's a cross between nomadic and mountain-like armor. He is the valiant holy warrior, Yuliusen, master of Sinjutsu and hand-to-hand -hand combat warlord of winter storms. He looks at the blonde sensing promise and the blonde's newfound power looks at his claws and fangs. Finally, the last of the warlords of storms. A man who has a tattoo of a battle ape on his left arm. The man is wearing bracers on his forearms, a plated headband, black pants, black combat boots with shin guards, and finally a shirt with a kanji for killer ape on the back of it. He stands 6 one he has gray hair, tan skin and a build that would make most women want to feel him up with their hands. He is Appa Warlord of Hailstorms Master of Combat Athletics, Acrobatics and Parker, coming from the Forest Kingdom of Aquila. All of them taken in their respective bepasis of the blonde's newfound power and attributes. Raisin then comes back with ancient stone tapestries and notes on each on subject item his grandnephew told him about. The tapestries and notes from his ancestors revealed the weapons of Shintaoism created by Hachiman the God of War himself. The weapon Naruto has in possession is the Ultra Falcon Warbow, capable of shooting lightning fast to ultrasonic arrows. On the second sketch it describes and shows the sabers of the Divine Wind Dragon and the armor of the King Tiger. Twin longswords capable of using divine winds of tremendous power and capable of amplifying any level wind affinity to its ninth degree. The armor of King Tiger is capable of amplifying one's physical strength and endurance to ten times over, making any warrior wearing it invincible. Naruto you need to find these items. Together they could bring about destruction in the wrong hands like Danzo. Warned Raisin. Yes, Grand Uncle Raisin I will find these items they will not be used for evil, said Naruto in an affirmative tone. His masters brought him battle gear and weapons that would assist him in his journey. Rain gives him a set of ranged weaponry such as throwing knives, a wrist-mounted dart launcher, bow and arrow and crossbow. Blizzard gave him a stealth cloak with a set of flash bombs. Appa gave him a portable medical set of herbal medicines and remedies, along with wrappings and binds that slows bleeding. Uliusen and Raisin gave him weapons of a large assortment from twin saber katanas, combat knives, tonfa, brass knuckles and twin metal batons. With Raisin giving him shuriken, kunai and senbin along with explosive tags and storage scrolls, and with Uliusen giving him a medallion that will balance out his sinjutsu use. The four warlords of Storm leave. Naruto it is time to talk to your tenant said Raisin as he directs Naruto into a room of darkness. Naruto walks into the room along with his granduncle. Naruto's journey is beginning as his uncle prepares him for his meeting with a giant monster fox. The two Yuzumakas go into a room full of darkness. With the only lighting being in the center of the room. They sit back to back Indian style in meditative positions. Now Naruto close your eyes and concentrate your chakra inward. Focus on a chakra channel that seems alien to your own instructed Raisin as Naruto does as instructed and concentrates his chakra inwardly with Raisin doing the same as well with his chakra. Within seconds Naruto and Raisin appear in a dense forest. Full of foliage and fauna. The two walk to the center until they hear a loud. Greetings my warden it's finally about time we meet. We have much talk about said a figure coming out of the shadows of the forest. He looks to have red hair similar whisker marks to Naruto's own a build comparable to Naruto's in armor, akin to a warrior ascetic. You must be the QB no Kitsune said Naruto as he looks at the figure in front of him who nods in acknowledging of the question. I would like to ask you some questions pertaining to the October 10th seconds attack. Ask Naruto as he looks at the figure in front of them. I would gladly answer them follow me. Said the humanoid tailed beast as they go towards an area in the mental forest. They walk towards an area to see a table with a shogi set. They sit at a table with Raisin as the referee of the game. So, what do you want to know about it asked QB as both Naruto and his uncle began their rounds of questions and rounds of shogi. Elsewhere in Konoha. Hiruzen is having a day full of surprises. As he read a report and a letter from the very son of his successor living in Sector 77 and that by himself, he killed ten Anbu that had planned to rape and kill Anko with fighting abilities of an extraordinary caliber. With a letter also saying Naruto is going to launch a rescue operation behind Kumo's lines to get Hinata Huga. 
Hashina who was hidden in the room also reads the report and hope Naruto was alright. She also reads the letter praying and hoping he comes back safely. Then the village hidden in the clouds lightning country. Then the laboratory inside Kumo. A 17-year-old girl is floating inside a human-sized test tube, she bears a build between a high-performance multi-field athlete and that of an elegant gymnast, supporting an impressive bust, only contained by the one-piece black bikini. She had long dark blue hair. But what would be an eye-catcher is that she has two additional arms to her being. Scientists in the room are looking at her vitals and bio-readings. In the room is the third Raikage Dodd, he looks at the girl and thinks soon Project Shiva will be complete and once it is we will have an army of super-soldiers. It was fortunate that we found the remains of that Ryujin, Dragon God. With it in the Hyuga Princess Kumo would be invincible. However, what the Raikage doesn't know is Hinata is actually awake and pissed beyond reason. Naruto and his granduncle Raisin goes towards a particular tower to use an invention of his granduncle that should get Naruto where he needs to go. After all, Raisin developed it for possible aerial infiltration of an enemy country. But it was a prototype with its first tester and user being his own grandnephew. Lucky for his grandnephew he's now superhuman. Raisin had first shown Naruto when he was 13 years old. Flashback 4 years ago. Raisin and Naruto walks towards a tower that no one not even the Anbu of Kanoha noticed. They go inside to see various winged inventions that would seem out of a comic book, as well as various swords of particular types. Grand Uncle Raisin what is this place and what are all these gizmos ask Naruto as he looks at these curious looking machines and devices. These are my guilty pleasure. They are prototype gliders that I made. Should I ever wanted to go on a long distance glide over the elemental nations. This tower is the tower of the flying phoenix, it's also where I build special weapons and armor at. Answered Raisin as Naruto looks around, he sees a display case covered with a cloth. Before Naruto could look closely Raisin smacked him upside the head getting his attention. I add on no peeking Naruto it's a surprise I was working on for you. Said Raisin getting a sheepish look from the young blonde. Naruto then looks over to see a pot of sorts and some strange ropes hooked to four center pillars of the tower. What is this contraption in the center grandfather? Asked Naruto as Raisin looks at him and smiles. This contraption my dear boy is the Strata Sling System it's a special slingshot transport system I'm trying to perfect to sneak past enemy checkpoints by using the sling system to propel this pod into the stratosphere. Gestured Raisin to the pod and the sling setup as he continues saying. The pod has a glide steering system that allows for guided descents towards any target destination in the elemental nation at hand, it also has a large oxygen supply tank and ration supply hold that will make the trip a comfortable one. Said Raisin as he finished explaining to Naruto is in awe at the invention of his grand uncle. Flashback end. Naruto had gathered a versatile pack of some of his arsenal and equipment. Sets out twin saber swords, several throwing knives and shuriken, a pair of combat knives, a short blade, a collapsible spear, a bow and arrow set and lastly various types of explosives, along with various infiltration tools. Raisin comes into the room and brings with him a chest containing something unknown. Naruto I would like to give you this armor take it and wear it with truth. Said Raisin as he opens and reveals an armor set that has the best qualities that both a ninja and samurai could dream for in armor. It's comprised of dark coal shin and forearm guards that extends to the backs of the hands. The coal-colored chest guard has a design to the armor that has hybrid characteristics from the scale and lamellar used by the Gazip, Fury, warriors of Uliusen's culture, and the metal plating of Raisin's Ronin samurai armor. The stylish dark gray silver sleeveless over jacket with the symbol of the green dragon and white tiger on the back on the inside, it sports weapon holsters and pouches for additional scrolls and tools. A combat belt that contains multiple shuriken and bomb pouches. Attached to the chest guard are the symmetrical lamellar gray pauldrons that fits well with the armor chest guard and jacket. The pants are a black eagle color. With the combat boots appearing to be black and white color. Lastly a bandana-like forehead protector. Naruto proceeds to put on the armor as his granduncle goes to make the proper calculations for the strata sling to send him up to the stratosphere and for him to guide the pod. How do I look granduncle Raisin asked Naruto as he walks into the room in his armor. You look like a warrior in the making. So are you ready to make history and using this device of mine, said Raisin as he looks at Naruto, who says the one phrase he was looking for hell yeah databeo which gets a smile from the warlord of thunder himself, oh hell yeah get your ass in the pod said Raisin as Naruto gets into the pod. Now remember Naruto the hub in this capsule would be helping you glide towards Kumo, so use it wisely and pay attention to it. Also, after it lands destroy it. Instructed Raisin. No problem grand uncle Raisin. You can believe its destruction will be carried out asserted Naruto to his grand uncle's smirk. Oh, and one more thing take out the research notes they are found in the supercomputer for Kumo. Take this computer virus it will erase anything involved with Project Shiva and Project Ally. 
be sure to copy any information they have said Raisin as he hands Naruto the USB drive. Naruto had strapped into his seat in the pod as Raisin readies the Strata sling for its first ever use, Naruto thinks to himself. Let's rock as the sling propels the pod up into the stratosphere. The pod begins to employ its gliding system Naruto follows the directions of the directional computer system, directing the pod towards lightning country. The pod sails several hundred yards past the border of lightning and fire countries. The pod crash lands on a ridgeline of sorts. Naruto exits the pod and proceeds towards Kumagakur. In Hinata's point of view. Hinata is floating in a test tube chamber. Seemingly unconscious to the scientists in the room. However, what they don't know is Hinata is awake, concentrating on getting used to her newly enhanced senses and new appendices on her body. Pissed off at the abuse and treatment she endured for years and them experimenting on her, she feels that the time is now to escape and get some payback. Naruto's point of view. That acid bomb should take care of the pod. Luckily enough I have saved the mainframe and data. Now to save the princess from having her being used as breeding stock. Thought Naruto as he makes his way towards Kumo. He transforms into his tiger beast man state. Using his claws, he scales the wall without anyone noticing. Sensing that there are at least three to six guards at the bottom lounging around on break. He sneaks around the men moves through the alleys. Naruto spots a guard leaving out a dark alley. With the agility of the very animal he embodies, he pounces on the ninja and has his claws on his throat. What are you said the man in a fear-filled tone. Just a tiger beast man looking for a fighting princess who you bastards kidnapped from Kanoha 17 years ago. Said Naruto as he makes sure the man knows that should he make a sound he will kill him with his claws. So, tell me where is the lab holding the Hyuga and I might let you live. Said Naruto as he starts to draw blood from the man's neck. She's in the northwest block of the village. It's guarded by the dragoon unit of the block said the man as Naruto proceeds to knock him out and takes his uniform. He morphs back into his normal state and hides the unconscious form in a rundown building with a quilt covering his tied up form. He uses a disguise kit to mask his thick whisker marks. He proceeds to make his way towards the district. As he walks, he sees the Kumo is a large place with various businesses. He sees various shinobi inside the district. As he's walking, he's suddenly pulled into an ally by a mysterious hand. He is slammed into a wall and has three kunai to his throat. Who are you, talk. Said the woman who in Naruto's eyes is a sight of beauty. She had red hair and dark skin, her eyes are that of a hazel color. She has on a battle dress with a flak jacket over the top. The other two are blonde. One with a bowl haircut and a lighter shade of blonde hair. In an outfit that sports her beauty and femininity with her serious and ferocious tone, sporting modified flak jacket that functions like a girdle, a shirt that reveals her sizable bust, a short skirt, red armbands, and high boots. My name is Takeshi Sara, I was just walking by, and Naruto never got to finish as Naruto was cut into slightly on his neck. Alright you caught me I'm actually here to rescue the Hyuga princess answered Naruto in a truthful manner, as the three Kumo Kinoichi does something that surprises the young blonde. They let him go. What's happening here in Kumo asked a curious Naruto as the trio had to have a reason to do so. A silent civil war answered the third girl. Naruto got a good look at her. She had dark blonde hair and black eyes that spoke of a fierce jungle cat. Her outfit comprised of a black and purple blouse, black pants with a cloud design, purple fingerless gloves wrappings on her pants and arms. Finally blue beads on her left arm. Explain Mrs. asked Naruto. Ijido Nai is the name stranger that's Amui, she points towards the well-endowed blonde, and that's Karui Ujido pointing to the red head who's looking out. The San de Ami Raikage and the counselors had been doing risky and illegal maneuvers behind the daimyo's back. Abducting bloodline users from different countries that are citizens and non-combatants. Doing illegal experiments on people trying to create super soldiers like the Dragoon Unit. As well as committing serious war crimes answered Yujido. How come the daimyo hasn't done anything about these crimes asked Naruto as he slowly takes off his disguise because Lady Daimyo is kept in the dark by bribed heralds and officials paid by Raikage to tell her the accusations are false and fabricated. Explained Kari as Naruto reveals his real face to the three Kinoichi. What a hunk thought the three as they get it look at him in his armor. Blushing a bit at the blonde's physique they couldn't help but notice he had bold and whisker marks. So do you have a bloodline like the Inuzuka to have those whisker marks asked Yujito, who reaches and strokes the whiskers causing Naruto to purr. Which gets a purr from Yujito, Kari and Samui. My name is Naruto Yuzumaki Nami Kazi 3rd Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails Fox and Warrior of Storms revealed Naruto, which gets a shocking look from the three Kinoichis as they look at the blonde walking over to Yujito. I also sense you're a Jinchuriki to Yujito. Which shocks Yujito of being found by another Jinchuriki so easily, so which one do you have asked Naruto? The two-tailed fire cat answered Yujito as she and Naruto look at each other with an intense look of bedroom eyes. 
Well, I best be off I have a princess to save and an elite special forces unit to fight past I hope to see you lovely ladies in the future, said Naruto, as he transforms into his tiger beast man state leaves Yujito, Kari and Samui in surprise at his transformation. They grab his well-muscled arm and proceeds to kiss him individually on his lips. I hope you have room for enough brides in your streak by Akko whispered Yujito as she licks and bite his neck a little. Go get her tiger save room for us said Kari as she caresses and takes in his scent. Good luck tiger you're going to be needing it said Samui as she manages to cop a feel of his manhood. Now that's a man in my books. Thought Samui as she walks away from the scene. Boy I'm a ladies man and I'm not even trying thought Naruto as he leaps away. The three Kanoichi believe they found one of the most good looking and attractive boys in the world. Having traits not of only being a Jinchuriki, but also a tiger man beast finds him very desirable. Girls I'm willing to share him with you, especially you Kari said Yujito, as she kisses Kari deeply as Kari kisses back with Yujito, making sure Kari likes it. By cupping her ass and squeezing tightly. Wow Yujito I didn't know you swing both ways, said a surprised Kari as she looks at Yujito. Oh there is more things you need to know about me said Yujito as she drags Kari home with her. For a night she will never forget. Back to Hinata. Hinata is beginning to get used to her new arms and newly gained power. The group of scientists still doesn't know she's awake. That's changes as Hinata breaks free of her containment unit and goes on a rampage attacking the scientists and Kumonin in her path in a ferocious vengeful manner. Bones breaking, organs ruptured in her warpath. Back to Naruto. Naruto was in a fierce battle with the Dragoon unit. These warriors were highly aggressive and resilient for normal attacks from Shinobi. But Naruto is no normal Shinobi. Naruto using his formidable fighting skills and instincts he had managed to wipe out the Dragoon unit to one man. Who looks Naruto in the eyes and saw a fighting spirit incarnate. The man did one thing that surprises Naruto. He drops his sword and lets him pass giving him his key guard. Naruto takes the key card and proceeds to move past him towards the lab complex. I'm going home to plow my wife and become a family man, said the dragoon shock trooper, as he takes off his armor and heads home to his wife to make ready for early retirement and resignation from the village. It was that day a super soldier became a family man. Naruto makes his way inside of the complex. Moving towards the area of the supercomputer he goes in and takes out the guards in the room. Once Naruto finished doing this, he uploaded a virus into the system that erased much of the data on Project Shiva and Aulai and downloaded copies it on a flash drive. Naruto then makes his way towards Hinata's containment area, where he sees a path of blood and bodies. He follows the path to see a woman with long dark azure hair, tearing through the kumonins in her path like butter. She has two additional arms and fought with a majestic ferocity. Naruto proceeds to jump into the fray and kill the remaining Kumo guards in his tiger beast man state. Hinata not knowing who this stranger becomes weary of him. Who are you, are you with Kumo ask Hinata in a tone of cautioned aggression. No, I'm Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, I'm here to get you out of here and to your home in Kanoha said Naruto, as he transforms back into his human state. This gets a slight blush from the angry Hinata. Naruto proceeds to hand her some clothes he picked off a clothesline on his way there. More guards show up to try to capture Naruto and Hinata. Hinata and Naruto had to fight their way out of the complex. Seeing an even larger group of guards. This way said Naruto as he and Hinata jump out of a window. The two are running with speeds that are very much impossible for even Shinobi to run or keep up with. They see the gate is starting to close and seal to stop their advance. Naruto however takes out a detonator and presses the button, triggering an explosive he hit on the gate's hinges, causing the gate to stay open. The pair runs towards a very high cliff overseeing a massive river current towards wind country. The San de Ami Raikage and a group of Kumonin corner them. Your trapped boy give up the girl and data and I might let you live to be a stud, said San de Ami Raikage in a creepy manner. Hinata, do you trust me? asked Naruto in a calm manner as he senses the wind picking up fast. What? asked Hinata as she looks at him incredulously. Do you trust me? asked Naruto in a manner of reassurance. Yes, answered Hinata as Naruto picks Hinata up bridal style hang on tight, said Naruto, as he jumps at the cliff towards the river current, surprising the Kumonin that the blonde and Hyuga had leaped towards their deaths. However, halfway down Naruto activates a device his great-granduncle made for such a situation. In a matter of moments Naruto and Hinata are gliding through the air on the powerful wind current towards wind country, greatly surprising the kumonins of their survival and travel. What is this device? Asked Hinata as she looks curiously towards her savior. It's called a parachute. My grand uncle is a genius when it comes to inventions. Said Naruto as he and Hinata goes down river towards wind country. Finally, I'm free from that hellhole. I only wish I could thank Yujito, Samui and Kari for their help in keeping me sane and unviolated, thought Hinata as she looks into the blonde's eyes with wonder. She does one thing that surprises Naruto. She kisses him deeply tongue-wrestling him. 
They land near the shore of Wind Country. Naruto and Hinata are making out under the parachute. Naruto breaks away from Hinata what was that for Haim asks a curious Naruto as he looks into Hinata's marble-like eyes. That was for saving me from that hell handsome said Hinata as she and Naruto proceeds to walk towards an oasis and then back to fire country. Back in Konoha inside council chambers. The council members were divided in three sections. The clan heads of the Inuzuka, Akamichi, Nara, Yamanaka, Aburami, Yuga and Acha. The others being the elder and civilian council. Right now, the civilian side is feeling uneasy with the call for this meeting, as if they had been signing their own death warrants. Meeting is in session said Hiruzen as he along with Shizune, Tsunade, which surprises them deeply. But what really shocks them is the last woman in Konoha that the civilian and elder council would ever see alive Kushi-chan you're alive said Tsum and Makoto, who get up and hugs her. How is this possible said Choza as he looks at the red-haired Kinoichi known for being second to Tsunade Senju in combat prowess. Nice to see you to Choza, Shikaku, and Noichi how's life been treating you three? I see the ever stoic Aburami and Hyuga. How have you been taking Hitomi's death, Hiyashi asked a concerned Kashina. I've been hanging in there very well I'm still distraught over Hinata's kidnapping many years ago. I'm just hoping she is fighting her treatment said Hiyashi as Kashina looks at Hiyashi with a pleasant smile. Kashina the proceed to go towards the civilian side leaking bloodlust towards them and say, if you retards even think of getting my money and property again, I would kill you in front of your family and make them wear your skin as clothes am I clear the civilian side shit themselves in fit of fear. Okay people I called this meeting to tell you that Hinata Hyuga will return to Konoha with another clan heir with two days or so, said Hiruzen, as everyone except those who read the letter is shocked at who could it be. Do we know what clan he's from asked Danzo in a curious tone, why yes, we do Danzo he's the very container you try to turn into your little killing machine. Said Kashina in a venomous tone of voice. Then Anbu runs in and kneels before the Hokage to deliver some incredible news. Report commanded Hiruzen. Hokage Sama 1 Naruto Yuzumaki and Hinata Hyuga is requesting to see you and everyone here in this chamber in two days sir, said the gator mask Anbu. Bring them here. Immediately said Hiruzen. Hi Hokage Sama said Gator as he shunshins away. This is going to be some of the best times in Konoha yet, said Tsunade as some people nod at the statement. As everyone waits for the pair the wonder what they are like. Everyone in the council is waiting for the duo to walk in the gate. It was two days after word that Kumo's infamous dragoon unit was wiped out to the last man until he retired and the Hugairis had been rescued by an unknown warrior of sorts. At the moment the councils are waiting outside of the village gates for the return of the Hyuga princess. Some are waiting patiently, some not so much. Outside of the gates for the return of the Hyuga princess. The figure in the distance on a tree branch also watching his waiting with purpose not of a sinister nature. But of a nature of kinship. Drrrrgh where is that boy it's been two days can't we just civilian council was knocked through the ground with a single hammer fist from Tsunade as she had gotten sick and tired of the civilian councillors bitching and moaning. Gurey is sporting a cast for both his arm and leg as he looks over the horizon seeing for the pair. He had been worked over by both Tsunade and Kashina about what his motives were with their godson son's inheritance. They were not the pleased to hear he was siphoning off money from Minato's account to fund his novels. The result for Jiraiya was several beatings and a dark threat of castration. Luckily for him it's a good day for them. The Ashi, while stoic is showing signs of hopefulness in his daughter's return. Kashina is openly showing signs of hopefulness. The waiting group see the duo walking into distant seeing range. Naruto walks towards Hiruzen, Kashina and Tsunade. They see Naruto towering over Hiruzen, closely rivaling if not surpassing Jiraiya in height, and build third Hokage, I'm Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, I'm pleased to meet you on short notice. Said Naruto as he bows in respect of the aged leader with Hiruzen doing the same. He turns towards Hiashi as he looks at his daughter with eyes of awe and shock. Seeing his daughter not ugly or freakish for having four arms and being built like an Amazon. But magnificent and fierce in her steps towards him he looks into her eyes and sees they are marble-like, but carries a fierce firestorm in them. He does one particular thing that makes him breaks tradition he goes over to embrace his now beautiful and fierce daughter in a hug. The Nada reciprocates by hugging back with all four of her arms. The two break from the hug. My daughter I don't care what happened to you I love you and will always be supportive of you even with these changes said Hiashi, which got a teardrop from his daughter with a proud expression. Hiashi turns towards Naruto. Thank you for bringing my daughter back to me. Thank you very much said Hiashi as he bows before Naruto. Naruto returns the gesture with a bow of his own. The civilian counselor calls out and ruins the moment by opening his mouth with a comment that would make the rest of the civilian counselors go home and retire from their positions. Ah so the demon has come back to meet its masters. 
Now kneel before us and gravel to us, said the councilman as one councillor new to the scene actually steps away from the group of morons. Sensing what's about to happen. Naruto with a burst of speed, grabs the man transforming into his white tiger beast man state, surprising everyone except Hinata at the meeting point. Watch your tongue you arrogant shit before I rip your heart out right in front of your family, and eat it slowly said Naruto in his primal tone of voice. As he slams the man into the ground leaving him in a state of absolute fear and a need to change his underwear. Naruto looks at everyone who looks at him and wonder with the civilian council looking at disgust and deep fear. Hinata walks up to him and strokes his whiskers getting a purr from the beast man. Even the hidden watcher wants to stroke his whisker marks, but settles on a silent kawaii moment. Hinata haim that tickles said Naruto as he reverts back into his human state. So that's what you were talking about in your letter said Hiruzen as he looks at the young man in front of him in awe. Kishina, Tsum and Tsunade look at Naruto in astonishment at the reveal that he's the chosen one from the prophecy of Shintaoism. Makoto thinks boy oh boy Satsuki is going to like him. Maybe he could break her out of her emo funk as she looks at the blonde in front of her. So, Naruto mind explaining what your power was asked Hiruzen as the heads of the Hyuga, Akamichi, Nara, Inoichi, Ichiha and Aburami not in agreement. Let's take this inside said Naruto as they all agreed. As he and the group walks inside the village gates towards the council chambers, he gets looks of envy, desire, and awe. Hinata walking alongside him is getting looks from the male population in a more googly eye sort of amazement. Elsewhere in Konoha. Niko now in her casual guise as Yuzuki Yuga Kurana Yuhi, Anko Midarashi and Hana in Yuzuka are all hanging out in an all Kinoichi bar. Yuga thinking to herself about what was revealed to her by the blonde on who trained him. Hey Yuga, you've been quiet for the past two days. What's on your mind asked a curious Hana as she's worried about her friend. Anko and Kuranai also listen in on this. Well, it's Anko's admirer. I keep remembering the masters who taught him. Said Yuga who gets a look from the three. What are they to you asked Kuranai as she looks at her friend and teammate. Legend said Yuga in an awestruck tone. This I got to hear. Said Anko as her friends nods in agreement. Well the guy's masters are the warlords of storms they are some of the most elite warriors on the planet. Being masters of various forms of combat would exceed the skills of experts, even most highly respected masters of the fields they studied. For Tujutsu, Sinjutsu and weapons combat the warlords of winter, thunder, and hailstorms could defeat Might Guy casually, with the warlord of winter storms being capable of overwhelming the three Sanin, even while all three are using sage mode. The warriors of rainstorms is the mistress of all around ranged weapons, she makes Tenten's skill in the area look amateurish at best. Lastly the Warlord of Windstorms is a master of illusions to the point that well Kuranai you would want to be taught by him said Yugao, as all three are surprised that the blonde was trained by some of the most elite warriors on the planet. Inside the council chamber. Naruto began to explain how Hinata got the way she is through Project Shiva. How she is now a human divine dragon hybrid. Everyone in the room is in shock that the Raijin is real and seeing a bridge between human and dragon right in front of them. Naruto had then explained to them that his beast man transformation is the result of a prophecy pertaining to Shintaoism. How he was blessed by the god of war Hachiman to gain the strength and tenacity of the white tiger, the willpower of the white falcon, and the power and wisdom of the green dragon, allowing him to tap into each power individual. He lets them know that he has tapped into one of the powers not all of them. Some of the civilian council are disgusted by such nonsense thinking the demon is lying about being blessed by the god of war. How and why would Lord Hachiman bless you a demon of all things to have the power of those majestic creatures, said one civilian counselor, as some of the others agreed. Actually, he telling the truth, said Tsu Yuzuka as she brings forth a tapestry of a figure with a unique yin yang symbol, containing the tiger and dragon with a falcon underneath both. This tapestry has been in my clan since the founding of this village, said Tsu, as Kishina and Tsunade take out similar tapestries as well to show they are telling the truth. Naruto Sachi could you please take off your vest and shirt to show what we mean, said Kishina as Naruto does as told and takes off his shirt, which makes him Kanoichi including Hinata and Makoto, minus Tsum, Tsunade, and Kishina, to blush at his muscle torso. Naruto turns around and shows the symbol showing they match the one seen in the tapestry. Naruto puts his shirt and vest back on getting a grumble from the female Anbu in the room. So Naruto what place would you want in the leaf? Asked a curious Hiruzen as he looks at the primal blonde in front of him. Well I was actually thinking about operating as an independent mercenary under your direct command only. Though some would like me as a ninja, I feel however I can't trust those who wouldn't like me as a ninja, due to some personal issues and issues involving the prophecy said Naruto, as he looks around the room at the surprised audience. But Naruto's subtlety looking at Jiraiya, the civilian council and the elder council. Hiruzen nods in agreement at this prospect. 
So, Naruto Niko had been shaken up by your teachers in the art of war, would you mind telling us who they were asked Hiruzen, as some of the civilian council listen in, as they could hire assassins to kill them for teaching the demon such fighting skills. My masters were the five warlords of storm said Naruto as the Hokage, and the shinobi council look at him in shock as the civilians minus one ignorantly laugh at Naruto. So, you got some losers to train you ha <laughs> said one council member, as he is soon picked up by the blonde in his tiger man beast state, who jumps up into the air and does a hellraiser choke slam killing him and bring him back to life. You mean you were trained by some of the deadliest warriors on the planet, asked a surprised Hiruzen as he looks at Naruto in shock and awe. Um excuse me I'm new here could I get an understanding of these warlords of storms, please ask the new counselor who has more sense than any one of the civilian counselors. Why of course since you ask nicely unlike your ignorant bigoted colleagues. The five warlord of storms are some of the most skilled and lethal warriors on the planet, with each being masters of combat, that makes all three sand and look like toddlers in combat, with one being Yuzumaki Reizen warlord of thunderstorms, the master of ninja and samurai martial arts. Answered Choza as the man just nods in intrigue about this information. So, Naruto before you can operate as a force independent of this village. I would like to test your fighting ability. What do you say asked Hiruzen as he looks at Naruto who is in thought of being tested. It's only fair. I accept the test, said Naruto in a stoic manner. Splendid the test will be five weeks from now. Said Hiruzen knowing he's going to have an interesting time. Hiashi don't know I would like to speak with you said Naruto with a serious expression. As both walks out of the room. Alright meeting adjourned said Hiruzen as everyone leaves Hinata went with Tsunade to the hospital to check to look for any health defects her enhanced body may have. What is it Naruto what do you need asked Hiashi curious and now stoic. I had went over the data I stole from Kumo. They had inside help that day when Hinata was kidnapped said Naruto as Hiashi looks at him in shock. This is a big claim and accusation Naruto do you have any proof asked a serious Hiashi. Yes inside of the files are the contacts of moles inside of the leaf, much of it points to the Hyuga elders being in the mix. Said Naruto as he shows Hiashi the evidence he had found in the files. Hiashi being shocked by the evidence in the files indications. At the hospital. Tsunade is running through tests on Hinata, making sure there is no anomalies with the infused DNA. Incredible your genetic structure has not only been enhanced by the DNA. But by the looks of it, it has evolved your bloodline to levels unseen before. Your chakra levels are on mine and Kashina's level of storage and potency. Said Tsunade as she turns off the light. Hinata try to use your Byakugan now asked Tsunade as Hinata does so which amazes her at what she sees. What do you see asked the slug Sanin. I can see with full clarity Lady Tsunade, but there is more it seems I'm capable of seeing in thermal and ultraviolet vision spectrums, the hole in my 360 degree view has been fully closed. As well as see the auras of you, Shizune and Tauntin said Hinata surprising them all in the room. Tsunade cuts the lights back on. I'm done with my beepasis you're at the peak of physical health and then some. I just have to check out your boyfriend. You're dismissed said Tsunade as Hinata blushes at the boyfriend part. Back with Naruto. Naruto walks towards the hospital after the meeting with Hiashi about the traitors of the Hyuga clan and to the leaf. As Naruto walks through the village, he quickly becomes an eye-catcher for many women in the village. With his form being pleasing for many of them. It's you said one Anko Midarashi, as she speeds up and hops on the young blonde kissing him. Tongue wrestling him deeply. They break the kiss quickly. So Byako how's it going ask Anko in a seductive tone as her friends are walking up behind her. Not much snake charmer just coming back rescuing Hinata Hyuka from Kumo that sort of thing. I'm heading to the hospital to get a checkup from Tsunade Senju herself. Explained Naruto as Anko licks her lips thinking of seeing what the beast man in front of her is packing. Well might as well show you the way right Hana said Anko, as Hana nods in agreement to show him the way to the hospital. Hana and Anko each take his arms to show him to the hospital. Amazing his muscles feels like iron thought both Hana and Anko as they guide Naruto. Boy oh boy he's a primal ad honest all right. Thought Kurinai as she looks at the blonde being guided by both Anko and Hana. They manage to make it to the hospital with Naruto in tow. Anko and Hana helps him to Tsunade's office. Lady Tsunade I'm here for my checkup. Said Naruto as he walks in the room. He notices Hinata walking past him with a smile. Hinata before going home hides around the corner to hear something about the blonde she has become smitten with. Hinata along with Anko and Hana are also listening in at the checkups. Alright Naruto could you change into this gown get onto the x-ray machine so we can check for any anomalies. Said Tsunade as she and Shizune watch as Naruto gets undressed. After he takes of all his clothes. Hinata looks to see he is a golden god in their eyes as his physique puts lesser men to shame and is arguably the best they have seen. It's taking the willpowers of the three to rush in and ride him like a cowgirl. 
they initiate the X-ray and CAT scans on Naruto showing his skeletal structure, noting that his form contains tiny skeletal bones that allows for his transformations. They went on to do some blood work showing everything is in order. They finally move on to the urine samples which causes Naruto's admirers and one Shizune Kato to have a nosebleed at the size of his pakage. My, my you certainly are a big boy, said an impressed Tsunade, as Shizune is still admiring his pakage nods in agreement. I can't wait to ride that tonight thought in unison Hana, Hinata and Anko, as they feel hot and bothered as they each lick their lips at the sight of his manhood. Alright get in these short pants it's time to test your athleticism with and without your beast state, said Tsunade, as Naruto gets dressed and follows her to the training course inside of the hospital. Naruto proceeds to showcase his physical attributes in lifting heavy weights, pulling a boulder across the room, going through a jungle gym style obstacle course. Showcasing scoring with incredible numbers to his statistics both in his man-beast state and his normal human state. Amazing thought in unison the five women in the room who are in awe at the young blonde's display of superhuman ability. Naruto then gets his armor and suit back on as he does so Anko, Hinata and Hana sneak up on him and kisses him each tongue wrestling him with similar levels of intensity. So Bayako welcome back to Konoha, said Anko in sultry manner as she strokes his whisker marks. Hana feeling his muscles and Hinata feeling his manhood. Excuse me girls, but this is a hospital take the blonde Adana somewhere else and do what you want with him, said Tsunade, as the three girls plus one biomorphic beast man proceeds to leave the hospital. Let's go to your home so we can meet you mom and then your bed said Anko as she caresses his whiskers lovingly. Sorry girls I have to take care of something in Hinata's home. Care to join me Hinata said Naruto whose tone of voice turned from joyful and excited to serious and warlike. Hinata, sensing something important about the events in her home walks with him. The night is about to be interesting. Thought Anko and Hana in unison. Time skip three hours later at the Hyuga compound. The elders are all in the main meeting room of their compound waiting for their clan head to arrive. However, what they expected was a simple but calm leader walking through the hall's doors, that is until he Ashi Hyuga bursts through the doors with intense rage and bloodlust. Behind him is one Hinata Hyuga looking like a goddess of war, and next to her one Naruto Yuzumaki, who has his eyes glowing green. It has come to my attention that this council has been dealing with enemies of the leaf. By selling secrets and allowing for the kidnapping of my daughter here, said Hiashi as Hinata steps forward drawing out four swords each of them with identical and unique design. Before Naruto could lock the door a figure in a cloak walks into the room with purpose. Naruto smelling something about her. As if he has familiarity to her. She takes down her hood to reveal herself to be Hitomi Hyuga, the mother of one Hinata Hyuga and Hinabi Hyuga, standing in all her glory at the side of the Hyuga elders who are shaking in fear with Hiashi and Hinata, shaking with awe and shock at her presence. You, you should be dead that poison should have, should have killed me with better assassins. You forget I make my own tea interrupted the pissed and stoic Hitomi Hyuga as she draws out her Chikudo. Hiashi about to jump in the help his daughter and wife massacre the Hyuga elders until a hand from Naruto stops him. I think we should let things get sorted out by the ladies. Don't you Hiashi sama said Naruto as Hiashi thinks about it and nods in agreement. Honey darling don't tire yourself out. Because tonight me and you are going to celebrate Hinata's after all the night is young, said Hiashi as Hitomi blushes at the statement. Hinata blows a kiss toward Naruto as he and Hiashi shuts the door and barricaded it, trapping the elders inside with one angry Hyuga mother and a daughter who has the blood of god dragons inside of her. Screams and sounds of flesh being cut can be heard in the hallways of the Hyuga compound. Thank you Naruto. With those old bastards gone I can finally get rid of the cage bird seal. You have really done me and my clan a great service today said Hiashi as he bows in thanks to the young blonde. It is no trouble Hiashi-sama I think it would be better to clear the snakes out of Hyuga clan before going after the ones in civilian and elder councils as well as in the animal kingdom. Said Naruto as Hiashi nods in agreement at the statement. Oh, I almost forget here is a seal that would not only remove the cage bird seal, but can replace it with a seal for everyone in your family. The details are in this scroll said Naruto as he hands Hiashi the sealing formula and details of its purpose. A knock on the meeting hall door lets Naruto and Hiashi know that the two Hyuga women are done with their vengeance. Hinata was the first one out of the room as she goes towards Naruto and deeply, but surely locks lips with him. With him returning the favor. Hiashi how I have missed you. I'm finally home with the right rad exterminator for the job. Let's go and celebrate Hinata's return in private. Said Hitomi as Hiashi picks her up bridal style and heads to their bedroom for a night like no other. Naruto doing the same for Hinata who is shun shined to the Namikaze compound where Naruto Yuzumaki Namikaze and Hinata Hyuga began to have intense celebration sex. The night is prosperous in more than one way. For the Hugas and for Naruto Yuzumaki Namikaze. Elsewhere in the leaf at night. 
A meeting between Wanjureya of the San and, and the Shinobi of Darkness himself Danzo Shimura is actively happening. Both are meeting in a private business cafe owned by the Shinobi of Darkness himself in a private office. So, Jureya we're here. So, what do you want ask Danzo in a curious and stoic tone. But strictly business pertaining to one Naruto Uzumaki Nami Kazi. Answered Jureya in a serious tone. I'm listening. Said Danzo in a curious tone of voice. He is an uncontrollable factor that you can't control. Nor I and the toads can explain Jureya as Danzo nods in agreement. So, what do you purpose we do ask Danzo curiously as Jureya smirks. Simply put we join forces to weaken him. To where we can deal with him like nothing to it. After he is eliminated, you can rule the leaf with an iron fist, I and the toads can profit from the wars and prophecy telling, as well as help with the funding in the village, said Jureya, as he takes out a scroll and reveals a small container full of black liquid of sorts. How are we to weaken him before we eliminate him asked Danzo as he looks at the toad Sanin. This is a very potent and very powerful toxin that would slowly eat away at his chakra and healing factor, even his tenant wouldn't be able to save him. Explained Jureya as he hands Danzo a secret weapon to weaken the champion of Hachiman the god of war. So do we have a deal asked Jureya as he looks at the very shinobi of darkness dead in his eyes. Yes we have a deal answered Danzo as he raises his cup up to toast with Jureya. A dark alliance is formed. Time skip morning time. Naruto is sleeping with the naked form of the human dragon Amazon Hinata Hyuga on top of him. The night before was full of passion and connection. That both Hinata and Naruto had shared in the bedroom the night of love making. Naruto tries to get up but is stopped by Hinata. Don't go by Akko. I want to play our beast dance again like we did last night. Said Hinata as she feels his manhood seeing that her words are getting to him. I'm sure why not darling said Naruto as he and Hinata have another round of rough sex. Hinata writing him like no tomorrow. I can get used to this thought Hinata as she feels Naruto nibbling at her breasts and cupping her ass with his left hand. Elsewhere in the Namikaze compound. Ashina is studying the Ultra Falcon war bow that her son has brought home alongside Tsum and Tsunade. They each study the interesting weapon's design for what the weapon can individually they rule out the legends they have heard about the weapon. Alright ladies we have been at this for the longest. Let's hit the spa I'm paying, said Tsunade as she along with Tsum and Kashina nod at their sensei as they go put up their research findings in a purse with a level 35 seal. They put it in a filing cabinet in the study and walks out. The trio of Kinoichi walk out of the study locking and sealing the door. As this was going on a group of Root's covert combat experts are waiting to attack the Namikaze home. With the intent on weakening Naruto for their master's plans. Once the Kinoichis leave they began to attack compound. As they jump over the fence, they had unknowingly triggered the alarm system. But Naruto. Naruto and Hinata napped after their beast-like sex session. Until the alarm goes off waking the two up. What's that Naruto-kun asked Hinata as she gets her clothes on and gets her swords. The compound is under attack said Naruto as he goes over to the monitors in the room. He sees attackers who look like robed raiders that took him from the village in the past. Outside of the main compound house. The robed raiders are trying to get in using explosive tags. However, they aren't making much headway in their efforts. However, before any of them could react. A chakram hits one of the raiders slitting his throat killing him. It ricochets off of the wall into the hand of a leaping Naruto who alongside Hinata in a nearby tower is launching a brutal counter-attack. Hinata is throwing bombs and firing crossbow bolts at the intruding attackers, while Naruto is engaging in close quarters, fighting with his twin saber swords, fiercely battling the intruders with a savage frenzy. Minutes felt like hours. The raiders while they are formidable, well armed and very well trained, had been killed by the pair of lovers. The last raider shoots an exotic paralyzing agent inside of Naruto before he kills him. Naruto feeling the effects of the drops to one knee. Hinata, concerned for he lover jumps down to meet him. Naruto-kun are you alright ask a concern Hinata. I'll be fine, but it seems like this toxin is trying to paralyze me. Luckily my healing factor is actively to neutralize it but it's a slow process. Not to worry I'll be fine. But from the seams of it I'm unable to use my beast state for a few months, answered Naruto as he looks at his lover with a reassuring gaze. Well let's clean up these bodies and this mess. I'll happily walk you home to see your family said Naruto as Hinata nods in agreement. The pair began to clean up the battleground of bodies and bomb craters. Naruto also went towards the gate to see his mother, godmother and future mother-in-laws at the gate, along with the Hokage and a small battalion of Anbu. Naruto-kun what's happening asked Kishina as she looks at her son in worry. Oh just a group of mysterious ninjas attacking our home trying to kill me said Naruto in a nonchalant manner and tone. As everyone is shocked at his nonchalant attitude at the statement. He's definitely perfect for Hana thought Tsum as she has been hearing about Naruto's attractive aura and other traits desirable by women. 
Naruto by dear Sachi what has grand uncle Raisin been teaching you asked Kashina as she and Tsunade wonder the same as her. Time skip 6 hours later Hyuka compound. The evening went on with relative peace. Naruto had also installed more defense-orientated seals to make it dangerous for any attackers or thieves. Hinata and Naruto spent the evening together getting to really know each other well. The date was immensely satisfactory. Naruto at the moment is taking Hinata home to her clan home. Thank you for taking me home Naruto-kun I really appreciate it. Especially after the time we had said Hinata in a flirtatious tone as she feels his manhood. Well, my Ryuhaim it was fun for me. Go and visit your family help them rebuild I have some training to do. Said Naruto as he shone shined back to his cave in the forest. That's a man I approve of. Don't you agree he ashi said Hitomi who looks a surprised Hinata who blushes at what they had seen. Yes I do. Hopefully our grandchildren would be as good as he is said he ashi as Hinata blush deepens. Well enough about your future husband. Let's go see your clansmen and sister said he ashi as the Hugo trio walk towards the compound celebration chambers. As they walk in everyone looks to see Hiashi and Hitomi. But they are in awe at Hinata. They are amazed at her form especially the females young and around the same age as Hinata. Hanabi Hyuga looks at her older sister in awe and admiration. Slowly but surely the celebration began after the silence as one of the girls, five or six year olds walks up to Hinata. Hinata being the kind-hearted girl that she is picks her up with her lower left hand. Wow said the young girl in question. The celebrations have gotten off at a great start for the Hyuga clan. With Naruto. Naruto is back at his cave cavern training grounds. He goes over to disable the jutsu he placed on the grounds. Walking into the grounds he gets ready to train for the tests ahead. Naruto attempts to transform into his white tiger beast man state. However, he discovers that he isn't able to tries again to have a realization. The raider that had shot him with a poison dart had used something only a few beings would know of and know where to acquire it. Son of a bitch that raider had acquired the black star toxin. Only a few beings know where that toxin comes from. One of those is the toads which means. The toads are making their move early. Thought Naruto as he meditates to try and remove the toxin, only to activate something entirely different relating to one particular symbol on his back. Time skip two weeks later. Naruto has been practicing with his new ability gaining an understanding of its capabilities. He still hasn't been able to use his white tiger man beast state for weeks he feels his chakra system. It's not drained and or damaged by what the raider shot inside of him. Naruto thinks about visiting Hinata, maybe she could train with him. He shunshin towards the Hyuga compound. Inside of the Hyuga compound. Hinata has been sparring with her sister for the past couple of weeks. The Nabi while very well advanced in Jiuken can't match her sister's unique physicality. Right now, Hinata is looking through more of the Hyuga's archives to try and find a form of fighting perfect for her four additional arms. She begins to give up slightly seeing as one of her clan's previous iterations of martial combat had centered around chakra channeling and grappling. While she is good at chakra channeling and control. She lacks any formal knowledge of the art of wrestling. She is about to place the manual up until she hears a knock at the door. Lady Hinata, you have one Naruto Yuzumaki Namikaze here to see you said a Hyuga named Ko. Let him in Ko said Hinata as she looks to see her beloved lover in question. Hi Hinata Haim how are you fitting back into the Hyuga clan asked Naruto in a joyful tone. Very fine by Ako I'm just glad you saved me and I rewarded you in kind. Said Hinata in a flirtatious tone as Naruto smirks. He notices a book in Hinata's hand. Say Hinata what are you reading asked Naruto as he looks at the manual in question. Oh I was trying to find a style that makes full use of my strength but it seems I don't have any formal training in it answered Hinata as Naruto looks at her dilemma. And perhaps I can help you in learning wrestling after all some of what the Warlords of Thunder, Winter and Hailstorm covered in my hand-to-hand -hand combat training, included a great deal of wrestling. I could help you with your training and grappling style martial arts, said Naruto as Hinata hops on him and makes out with him in thanks of his offer to help. Time skip day of the test. Secret arena. Naruto had trained Hinata extensively in the art of wrestling, greatly improving her fighting ability and unarmed combat. Hinata has now gained knowledge and extraordinary skill in Ikazuchikan, a highly formidable combat form that would allow the user to overcome groups of opponents and single well-trained opponents. The clan heads and their heirs are waiting for one Naruto Uzumaki to show up. One clan heiress by the name of Ino Yamanaka thinks to herself. I wonder who this guy is that is testing himself against Sensei Asuma and several Jonin. If he's smart, he would back down from the test before he gets hurt, thought the platinum blonde as she sits waiting for the test taker. Another heiress by the name of Satsuki Achiha looks on with interest as she waits alongside her mother. The two male layers of the Inoshikacho trio are also waiting for the test taker. Hana Inuzuka is waiting for the test taker along with one Tenten Higurashi, who's curious about the Yuzumaki Namikaze heir she has been hearing about. 
The doors open to show one Naruto Uzumaki Nami Kazi walking in wearing his battle armor and gear. The Achiha heiress looks at Naruto with interest. As does the Higurashi, Yamanaka and Inuzuka heiress. Tsunade, Jiraiya Kishina and Hiruzen look at him in surprise. Naruto's face appears to have sage mode, but something is off with how the markings on his face appears, instead of being like a tiger, it's similar in pattern of Hashirama's own sage mode. Has Naruto mastered sage mode in record time maybe it's pertaining to one of the marks on his back. Thought Tsunade as she along with Tsum, Kishina, have a similar line of thought as he walks in. I my late ask Naruto as he walks over to Hiruzen. No certainly not at all you're just in time. Said Hiruzen in an honest tone of voice. Wow so that's Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze I must admit he looks like a prince no scratch that a warrior prince. Thought a blushing Ino as an equally blushing Tenten and Satsuki Achiha have a similar thoughts. Tsum is having difficult time controlling one Hana in Yuzuka. Must hump Alpha thought Hana as she looks at Naruto. Tsum luckily had brought her clan's tranquilizer darts with her and stuck one in her daughter. Putting her to sleep. So what does the test consist of asked Naruto in a serious tone of voice. The first part will comprise of Tejutsu. You will first face one Might Guy. Answered Hiruzen as Naruto nods at the question. Naruto has been well informed of Might Guy's exploits as a master of Tejutsu. Naruto feels honored to be challenged by Might Guy. Next is the Buki Jutsu, so you will be facing Niko, Hei Echo, and my son Asuma in weapons combat individually, after that you will have to break out of one game Jutsu, courtesy of one Yuhi Kurunai. In Senjutsu you will be facing Jiraiya, lastly you will face Kakashi Hot Aki in Ninjutsu. Each and every battle requires you to use your skills and abilities for that specific field. This arena will mediate the output of every Senjutsu and Ninjutsu attack, so don't worry about any loose attacks hitting anyone. Explained Hiruzen as he, the respective groups of ninja head for the seats in the stands and fighters box. Naruto deactivates. The first opponent walking into the room is Might Guy a man wearing a green spandex suit underneath a jonin flak jacket, he has on orange leg warmers. He sports black hair with a bowl haircut and bushy brows. You must be the Yandiam's son. I Might Guy the handsome green beast of Kanoha said, Might Guy with a flashy smile. It's nice to finally meet the green beast of Kanoha himself. I have heard stories about your exploits it would be nice to face you in Tejutsu, said Naruto as he gets into his stance. His hand placement catches the eye of Kishina, Hiruzen, Tsunade and Might Guy himself, as he gets into his Gokin stance. Since when does Naruto know Tetsu Ryu Jujutsu? Thought Tsunade, Hiruzen and Kishina as they see witness the beginnings of the battle. Ink Way of the Dragon warm up with Naruto as Chuck Norris and Might Guy as Bruce Lee. Time skip 6 hours and 50 minutes later. Naruto after facing and overcoming the hard-hitting strength and speed of Might Guy, with his skill in both Tetsu Ryu Jujutsu and Tulani Zerk, a combative technique from Warlord Winter's homeland. He has overcame the swordsmanship of both Niko and Haid, using his saber swords greatly outfencing the best swordsman and woman in the village, as well as outfraught Asuma Suratobi in bladed combat. He weathered through the Gain Jutsu assault of Kurana Yuhi, who was unable to affect Naruto's mind with Gain Jutsu due to shielding his mind with the Sorosaki state. He defeated the ninjutsu arsenal of Kakashi Hot Aki by having more jutsu adaptability. He faced and overpowered the Senjutsu Storm of Jiraiya by using his newly discovered power in the cave. Naruto greatly surprised and impressed every one of the clan heads and their heirs. Even getting praised by his mother and godmother for his skill and abilities in combat he has shown. Hana is more attracted to the alpha male than ever before. However, before she could leap at the Adonis she is hit with another dart from her mother. Tsutsuki is intrigued by Naruto's movement as she sees his moves like water in artistic form. Makoto smirks at her daughter becoming attracted to young Naruto, Tenten Higurashi is greatly impressed by Naruto's ability in weapons to fight off Asuma Siratobi, the best knife fighter in the village, Niko and Hei, the best swordsman and woman in the leaf. Alright Naruto you have passed the test you are approved for mercenary operations independent of the village's forces. You would be designated an ally. But you will only get assistance only when asked said Hiruzen, as he looks at Naruto in amazement and respect. Thank you Hokage Dono I will not fail you. Said Naruto who bows to the fire shadow. Who then returns the bow in respect. Soon everyone walks up to him. The heirs of the Akimichi and Nara come up to talk to him about cloud watching, discovering new foods and shogi. The boys really hit it off as instant friends as Naruto has hobbies and likes that are similar with their likes and hobbies, such as stargazing, discovering new herbs and spices, and H-I-A-S-H-A-T-A-R Mongolian style chess. But Shino Naruto found another intellect and partner in philosophy. Tsutsuki Uchiha a girl who has many traits desirable for few and traits that make her just eye candy for most males and some females. She is half the build of Hinata Hyuga and similarly cares herself as a strong woman. At the moment she is looking at a man who can be seen as her equal if not better. 
So Nami Kazi you are the one I have been hearing about from my mother. I must say your fighting ability is superb and animalistic. What kind of animal I do not care. It's alluring to me said Satsuki as she looks at Naruto in question seeing him with amazement and strong attraction. Satsuki you are such a flatterer for the blonde Adonis in front of you. But then again, I could have said the same said Ino, as she herself looks at the blonde in question. Sharing the same attraction as her raven-haired counterpart. Well ladies it's nice to be complimented by the fairer sex many times over. I should probably go hope to see you ladies again said Naruto as he walks away talk with his mother. Excuse me Kachin, but I would like to speak with you and Tsunade Bachin only about something asked Naruto in a tone of urgency. Kishina, sensing something wrong walks with him along with Tsunade towards a private room. Naruto what is it asked Tsunade as she looks at her godson. Yes, Sachi what is wrong asked Kishina as she looks at her son. We may have a problem, said Naruto. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.